Hi class, welcome to today's lesson. Exercise 5F, solving quadratic equations using factorization. In today's lesson, your examples and pre-learning will be example 15, solving quadratic equations using the null factor law. And your pre-learning for this example will be questions one and two in the new book and question four in the old book. And then we'll do example 16, which is solving ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And the pre-learning for this example will be questions three and four in the new book, questions five and six in the old book. And then finally, we'll do example 17, where we'll learn how to solve disguised quadratics. And your pre-learning for this example will be six and seven in the new book and eight and nine in the old book. But this is the lesson where you begin your journey into the applications of quadratics. Quadratics appear in many real-world applications and number problems, often in rather surprising ways. Now I'm teaching this lesson to you, assuming that you've already mastered factorizing with perfect squares, difference of perfect squares, and grouping. All right, with that, let's move straight into the introduction. If you were asked to solve a linear equation like 3x plus 2 equals 4, well, that just means 3x equals 2, therefore x is equal to 2 thirds. So solving a linear equation is easy. And if you were asked to solve 3x squared equals 12, well, that just means x squared is equal to 4, and you would know that means that x is equal to 2 or negative 2. So after doing our thirds unit, solving x squared is equal to a for x is pretty easy. But what about 3x squared minus x plus 2 equals 4? We could put all the numbers on one side and turn that into 3x squared minus x equals 2. Then divide that 3 out, we'd get x squared minus x on 3 equals 2 on 3. I don't know about you, but this doesn't really leave me with a lot of confidence on where to go next. So what if we just went trial and error? So let's try x equals 1. And subbing that 1 in, we'd get 3 times 1 squared minus 1 plus 2 equals 4. And that makes perfect sense. So this equation must be true. However, trial and error looks good, but let's see why it isn't. Now, you should be suspicious that there is another solution. And that's because x squared equals 4 has two solutions i.e. x equals 2 and x equals minus 2. So today we're going to learn all about solving quadratics with factorization. So the method we use today, the first step is to rearrange your expression. And that means putting everything on one side and having that equal to 0. So for example, we had uh, 3x squared minus x plus 2 equals 4. So if we subtract 4 from both sides, we end up with 3x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. So you can see there's everything on one side and 0 on the other. So now that we've arranged the equation in this way, the next step is to factorise the expression. So to factorise 3x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0, you know that we'll have to think about a times c which is 3 times minus 2, which is minus 6. And I also know that minus 3 times 2 are factors of minus 6. And summing minus 3 and 2 is minus 1. So we're going to use these facts in the grouping method. And that means that I can rewrite the quadratic as 3x squared minus 3x plus 2x minus 2 equals 0. And I'm sure you know this after all the hard work you've done in the previous lessons. But all we've done here is replace the minus x with minus 3x plus 2x. And of course, the next step along the factorization path is to group these. And taking out the common factor of each group, we end up with 3x times x plus 1 plus 2 times x plus 1 equals 0. I might have said x plus 1 there, I mean x minus 1. And so, of course, you know that leaves us with 3x plus 2 times x minus 1. So, so far, we've factored the quadratic using the grouping method that we've already learnt. How does this help us? Well, step three is using what's called the null factor law, which like the difference of perfect squares, from now on I'm going to call NFL. And no, that's not American football. So the null factor law is just saying that any number multiplied by zero equals zero. So that's no new information to you, it's just a new law to remember. So let's just prove that with 2 times 0 equals 0. 
38.76 times zero equals zero. Pi divided by three times zero equals zero. And finally, a Google times zero also equals zero. So another way of explaining this rule is if A times B is equal to zero, then A must be equal to zero or B must be equal to zero. So because of the first way I've described the null factor law, this means that zero times X minus one is equal to zero and zero times three X minus two is also equal to zero. Oops, did I say three X minus two? We meant three X plus two. And the second way that I've described the null factor law means that three X plus two times X minus one equals zero when three X plus two equals zero or X minus one equals zero. Okay, and so that just means this bracket relates to this equation and this bracket relates to this equation. So now we just have two linear equations to work out really, don't we? So the one on the left means that three X equals minus two or X equals minus two on three. But the one on the right, well, let's just say X equals one. Of course, if our maths makes sense, then we should be able to check our solutions. So from our trial and error method, we know that X equals one is a solution for three X squared minus X plus two equals four. So that won't be interesting for us to try, but let's try X equals minus two on three. So if we sub that into the equation we already have, that means we end up with three times minus two on three squared minus minus two on three plus two which is three times four on nine plus two on three plus two, which is four on three plus two on three plus two, just using the three to cancel down with the nine. So we've got a four and a two on three, so that's six on three and the two, which is two on two, sorry, which is two plus two, which is four, which is exactly what we want. Now, as I said before we started the introduction, Another part of this lesson is recognizing that quadratic solutions can arise in surprising ways. After completing our linear relations unit, you would have found it easy to solve for X when five X plus 12 all divided by X equals two. Well, multiplying both sides by X, we get five X plus 12 equals two X. Subtracting two X from both sides, we get three X plus 12 equals zero and Therefore, 3x equals minus 12 or x equals minus 4. However, what if we had to solve 5x plus 12 divided by x equals 2x? Now, the first step here would be to multiply both sides by x, which now gives us 5x plus 12 equals 2x squared. And all of a sudden, the quadratic appears. So the first step is to put all the terms on one side and 0 on the other. And that will leave us with 2x minus 5x minus 12 equals 0. Now you could have made that minus 2x, but just imagine that I have subtracted the 5 and the 12 to the other side, okay? It just makes much more sense to have the 2x squared. And that should have been 2x squared, by the way. Okay, so beginning to factor, and I'm assuming this is easy for you by now, I'm going to write out... Okay, just replacing the 5x with factors of 24. And my next step after grouping would have, and then when we finish the factorizing, we left with x minus four times two x plus three equals zero. And then using the null factor law, this statement is true when x minus four equals zero or two x plus three equals zero. So in other words, when x equals four, or when x equals minus three on two. All right, so it's a big step to see these quadratics pop up out of nowhere. Let's check the solutions to make sure we're correct. So when x equals four, the left-hand side of the equation is, is five times four plus 12 divided by four, just subbing in four as a value for x. And I've made that super clear by putting brackets where x would be. So just doing a little bit of arithmetic, we can see that's equal to 32 on four, which is eight. So now we have a right hand side of two times X, which is two times four, which is just equal to eight. 
So because the left hand side equals the right hand side, our solution is correct. And isn't that exciting? All right, let's have a look at x equals minus three on two. And subbing that into the left hand side of our equations, we get five times minus three on two plus 12, all divided by minus three on two, which is equal to minus 15 on two plus 24 on two minus three on two. And I've done that deliberately because it's easy to now cancel out the divided by two on all sides. So we're left with minus 15 plus 24 divided by minus three. And so therefore nine divided by minus three is equal to minus three. All right, let's have a look at the right hand side, which was two times minus three on two. And that's pretty easy. We just cancel the twos out. So we're left with minus three. And once again, the left hand side equals the right hand side, which is exactly what we want. Isn't that fantastic? Both equations work. So that initial equation, 5x plus 12, all divided by x equals 2x, has two solutions. So in today's lesson, the factoring we use is grouping, which will always give us two answers, using perfect squares, such as a times x plus b, all squared equals zero. You might say that gives us two solutions, but if you check closely, both those solutions are the same. So that means that perfect squares give us one solution. Or well, in this case, and that would be ax plus b equals zero, which is the same as saying x equals minus b on a. And the other type of factoring, of course, is difference of perfect squares, where you'll get some a times x all squared minus b squared equals zero. And you should know by now we factor that as ax plus b times ax minus b. And you should be able to see here that difference of perfect squares will give us two solutions, i.e. where ax plus b equals zero or ax minus b equals zero. In other words, where x is equal to minus b divided by a or x is equal to b divided by a. However, it may surprise you that not every quadratic equation has a solution. And it is possible to have one, two or zero solutions. So we've already seen that perfect squares have one solution and grouping and difference of perfect squares have two solutions. But what about x squared plus four x plus five equals minus two. And if I subtract one from both sides, I end up with x squared plus four x plus four equals minus three. And of course there was a good reason to choose that one because we've now got x plus two squared on the left. Now you know that x squared is greater than or equal to zero for all real numbers. And x plus two has to be a number, so there's no way that it could equal minus three. These kinds of problems with no solutions can often arise when you're asked to solve an equation like four x plus seven divided by x equals minus x. Sounds reasonable, right? So multiplying both sides by x will give us four x plus seven minus x squared. And adding x squared to both sides, we now have x squared plus four x plus seven equals zero. And if I minus two from both sides, we end up with, and we know that x squared plus four x plus five equals minus two has no solutions. Okay, we already saw that before when I was discussing this idea. So that means if you are presented with this equation, your answer is there is no answer. And at this stage, I just want you to keep an eye out for it, but Later on in this unit, you're going to learn exactly why. All right, right now, how about you pause that video and work on the building understanding questions in the new book, which translates to questions one, two, and three in the old book. So I know we don't always do the building understanding questions, but this skill is vital. So you must be confident with its foundations. All right, and I'll see you in the next section. Okay, in the lessons before this one, you've already learnt how to factor. So in today's lessons, the key new idea to solving quadratics is the null factor law, which simply means anything multiplied by zero is zero, i.e. zero times a is zero. And this implies that if a times b is equal to zero, then either a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero. All right, so let's summarize how this fits in with our method to solve quadratics. First, you're going to rearrange the expression so that all the terms are one side and zeros on the other side. Then you're going to factorize so you can find all the factors of quadratics that have an X in them. And then you can find the values of X that makes each factor equal to zero. You also need to note that quadratics can have zero, one or two solutions. And while I work on this method, 
Where it's appropriate, I'm going to show you a similar but alternative method alongside your solutions. When you complete your work, I'm happy with either one, as long as you understand what you're doing and you get the right result. Okay, let's move on to example 15, where we're going to solve the following equations. So part A, we've got x squared minus 2x equals 0. So if I factor this, we get x times x minus 2 equals 0, and therefore we have two factors with x in it. So using the null factor law, x is equal to 0, and x minus 2 equals 0 when x equals 2. So the way I want you to write out your solution is x equals 0 or x equals 2. So don't be confused by the x on its own. It's worth pointing out that x times x minus 2 equals 0 is the same as saying x plus 0 times x minus 2 equals 0. Okay, so therefore we've got two factors and two solution. And it's not necessary to write this x plus 0, it's just me making a little point to you now, okay? All right, let's move on to part B, where we have x squared minus 15 equals 0. So if I write out 15 as the square root of 15 squared, we can factor with a difference of perfect squares. And once again, here's two factors with x in it. So therefore, our solution is when x plus square root of 15 equals 0, or x minus the square root of 15 equals 0. And that's just using the null factor law. So of course, completing those equations, we want x equal to minus the square root of 15 or x equal to the square root of 15. So as I said, I'll do an alternative method where it fits. We could rewrite that as x squared equals 15. And you know that's x equals plus minus the square root of 15, just using what you've learned in thirds. So that means that x is equal to the square root of 15 or minus the square root of 15. So these two answers are the same. Finally, let's have a look at part C, where we've got 2x squared equals 50. So you can say that that's 2x squared minus 50 equals 0, and taking out 2 as a common factor. And clearly, 25 is 5 squared, so we can use difference of perfect squares. And here's somewhere we can make a point. We've got three factors, but we're really only focused on the two factors with x. So by null factor law, we want x plus 5 equal to 0 or x minus 5 equals 0. In other words, x equals minus 5 or x equals 5. And this is a place where I think the alternative solution would be better because 2x squared equals 50 can be rewritten as x squared equals 25. And therefore x is equal to plus or minus 5 just by using what we know from the thirds. And these two answers are the same, which is exactly what we want, right? All right, that's the end of the example, but it is worth noting, factoring with the difference of perfect squares should make it clear why there was two solutions to x squared equals a, when a is greater than zero, one solution to x squared equals zero, and no solutions to x squared equals a, when a is less than zero. As I said at the time, but it is worth taking it down as a pro tip, I think you'd noticed in C we had three factors, so that was a 2 and an x plus 5 and an x minus 5. So obviously 2 is a factor, x plus 5 is a factor, and x minus 5 are factors. But we're not interested in 2, we're only interested in the factors that have x involved. I'm sorry if it feels like I'm repeating things, but these are important concepts that need to become second nature to you, okay? All right, right now you should pause that video and do questions 1 and 2 in the new book and question 4 in the old book. And then hurry back so we can do the next section. In this section, the quadratics may be increasing in complexity, but if we're going to solve the quadratic, we still just one, factor the quadratic, and then two, solve using the null factor law. Okay, let's go straight into example 16, where we'll be solving the following quadratics. Okay, part A, we have x squared minus 5x plus 6, of course equal to zero. As a little side note, minus 2 times minus 3 is 6, and minus 2 plus minus 3 is minus 5, which I'm going to use for this factorization because we now get x squared minus 2x minus 3x plus 6 equals 0, which now becomes x minus 3 times x minus 2 equals 0. And by the null factor law, the solutions are when x minus 3 equals 0 or x minus 2 equals 0. In other words, when x is 3 or x is 2. So once again, if you're ever unsure in a test, just check, okay? So 
When x is equal to 3, that quadratic becomes 3 squared minus 5 times 3 plus 6, which is equal to 9 minus 15 plus 6, which is 0, which is what we want. And when x equals 2, the quadratic becomes 2 squared minus 5 times 2 plus 6, which is equal to 4 minus 10 plus 6, which is 0, which is what we want. Okay, let's move on to part B, where we have x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 0. Now hopefully it's apparent to you that that's a perfect square. So in other words, x plus 1 squared equals 0. And we've just got one repeated factor with x. So the solution to this is when x plus 1 equals 0, or when x is equal to minus 1. Okay, so that's nice and easy. Let's move straight on to part C, where we have 10x squared minus 13x minus 3 equals 0. And of course, a times c is 10 times minus 3, which is just minus 30. And I know that minus 15 times 2 is equal to minus 30. And minus 15 plus 2 is minus 13. So of course, I'm going to use these facts for factorizing by groups and replacing the minus 13 with minus 15 plus 2. We get 10x squared minus 15x plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. And my next step, I factor out the 5x and plus 1. Of course, you don't need to write that plus 1, but it really helps in the next phase because it gives us 5x plus 1 times 2x minus 3 equals 0. So our two factors with x tell us that the solution has to be 5x plus 1 equals 0 or 2x minus 3 equals 0. Of course, we're using the null factor law, and this implies that x is equal to minus one on five or x is equal to two thirds. And you can go through those steps yourself if you need to. And of course you can check that. Um, you could sub in x equals minus one on five for the value of x at the top there, or x equals two on three. But I'm gonna leave that up to you. But regards checking, I'm gonna say that as a pro tip, while checking is very important, it doesn't have to be by hand, a calculator is fine. So for example, let's check with the x equals three on two. So we wanna see that 10 times three on two squared minus 13 times three on two minus three equals, and hopefully my handwriting's good enough, fuel. And as I was saying equals, hopefully zero. Yes, it does. All right, so that's it for this example, but hopefully you've noticed the level of factoring skill that's required. While doing this exercise might help you develop that skill further, if you're really not confident, maybe you should go back and redo a couple of questions in the last few lessons. But if you are, right now you should pause that video and do questions three and four in the new book and questions five and six in the old book. And then we'll see you in the next section. Sometimes when we're asked to solve an equation for X, it can lead to creating a quadratic that wasn't apparent at first. Once this occurs, we just use the normal techniques to solve quadratics. And this means arranging the equation so that all terms are on one side and the other side is equal to zero. And then step two is factoring the quadratic and finally solving it with a null factor law. So as I said, no different than usual. All right, let's get on to example 17 where we're gonna solve the following. All right, part A, we have x squared equals 4x plus 15. And this really isn't a surprising quadratic though, is it? But let's first expand these brackets and then rearrange it so it's all on one side. All right, so that's the point we rearrange. So you can check your a times c, etc., etc. but I know that the next step is x squared minus 10x plus 6x minus 60 equals zero, which factors to x plus six times x minus 10 equals zero. Okay, you can check those steps yourself. Therefore, by the null factor law, we're left with x plus six equals zero or x minus 10 equals zero. Therefore, our solutions are x equals minus six or x equals 10. So if we're gonna check x squared equals four times x plus 15, if x equals minus six, then our right-hand side will be four times minus six plus 15, which is really just four times nine, which is 36. And the left-hand side, well, that's just minus six squared which is 36. So the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. Ba-boom, we're correct. And you could do the same for 10, but once again, I'll leave that up to you. So right now, I'm gonna move on to part B, where we have x plus six divided by x equals x. All right, so this is one of those more surprising ones. So 
Once I multiply both sides by x, we end up with x plus 6 equals x squared. And if I subtract x plus 6 from both sides, we end up with 0 equals x squared minus x minus 6. And if you're confident with your factoring, we can now turn that into 0 equals x minus 3 times x plus 2. So therefore, x is equal to 3 or x is equal to minus 2 by the null factor law. And this is definitely one that's worth checking. If x is equal to 3, then the left hand side will be 3 plus 6 on 3, which equals 9 on 3, which equals 3. And because the right hand side is x, which is 3, this means the left hand side equals the right hand side. And when x equals minus 2, the left hand side is is minus 2 plus 6 on minus 2, which is equal to 4 on minus 2, which is minus 2. And sure enough, that's equal to the right hand side. So we're correct. Now, as a pro tip for this one, using a calculator to check can be tricky. Make sure that you do left hand side and right hand side separately. Unless, of course, you have a CAS calculator, but that's another story. All right, right now you should pause that video and do questions six and seven in the new book and questions eight and nine in the old book. And then when you come back, we'll summarize this lesson. So for this lesson, applications may seem like false advertising, but maths is an application, right? But the main reason why I was saying this is important to applications is because using this technique is exactly how we solve real world problems. So you're gonna really need to master this lesson Otherwise, the next one is going to be very difficult. And to master this lesson, you're going to need to be a successful student. And in this lesson, a successful student will be able to recognize a quadratic equation, understand that if the product of two or more numbers is zero, then at least one of them is also zero, and be able to apply the steps required for solving a quadratic equation using the null factor law. And finally, understand that a quadratic equation can have zero, one, or two solutions. All right, and work hard to get those skills. I'll see you in the next lesson, whether that's in class or in the next video. Bye.